all tied up. Yes, all tied up. Um, it seems like a loss to me. I, I don't like... I, I just don't like ties in the NFL. I think... I really think that when it comes to the pro game, you play until there's a winner. And they do this in college. I don't know why they can't do this in the NFL. Honestly. I mean... Why not? Um, I know it doesn't happen very often, but it has happened a couple of times already in this season. And this was a very important game for certainly both the, the Washington Commanders and the New York Giants. And now it makes their next meeting that much more important. But honestly... I just, I hate ties. I really do. You know, play, play until there's a winner. Just, just play until there's a winner. Okay. That, that's all I got to say on that. Uh, but you know, I, I have other thoughts on the game other than that. Uh, we can get into the tie stuff a little bit later, but penalties, uh, penalties killed us yesterday. And I will say that you know, we can certainly argue the validity of these penalties, but they killed us. And in the end, you cannot commit penalties and expect to win football games. Um, the, the penalty on pass interference that was picked up, the flag that was picked up on uh, Fabian Moreau, that, um, I mean, look, our, our defensive backs had been getting called, you know, Benjamin St. Juice has been getting called for much less than that all year long, all year long. And Fabian Moreau impeded Terry McLaurin's progress to the football. Yes. The football was underthrown, but Terry could have had an opportunity to to come back to the football. And Fabian Moreau, it, I mean, it was a classic case of DPI. The referees, uh, they threw the flag. The officiating crew, they threw the flag and they picked it up, said there was no penalty. How? Tell me how that was not a penalty. Because our defensive backs have been getting called for much less all season long. All season long. I, I just, I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Um, and then there were two times I noticed, I don't know if anybody else noticed this, but there were two times where Taylor Heineke was hit. Uh, one time he was hit high. Uh, I forget who it was, but the uh, the the lineman came in as soon as uh, Taylor threw the football. He came in like with his forearm and hit Taylor right right smack dab in in the helmet. That is roughing the passer by the definition of the roughing the passer penalties nowadays that's rough in the passer it was not called there was another one where there was a late hit on Taylor Heineke that was not called I saw the the replay Heineke had thrown the ball and then he had gotten hit I remember back in uh, I believe the 80s it was that you had maybe two steps or something like that and then you had to let up. And this guy had more than two steps. And he flat out flattened Taylor Heineke. And there was no call. And then of course, everybody saw this. And everybody was just screaming like, Did you not see Cornelius's, Cornelius Lucas's 
helmet ripped off, spinning in the air. <laughs> and no flags. Now, how do you think... I got to take a, a drink of coffee. I'm sorry. Now, how do you think Lucas's helmet came off? Do you think that his helmet was so light that it just flew off? The replay showed that the, uh, the d defensive tackle ripped it off. I mean, he flat out, like, he, he ripped it off, folks. <laughs> and no call. The official was right there. He saw it. He did not throw the flag. Am I missing something? He didn't throw the flag. I mean, I, I don't, I don't understand it. I really don't. Um, I just don't understand it at all. And, and of course, the phantom flag thrown on Logan Thomas for the, the block in the back where it looked like Thomas either tripped or, or was pushed into the defender and they threw the flag on him. I mean, this officiating crew was horrible, was flat out horrible. And I know it's, it's usually, you know, I, I don't like to... As, as a lot of fans don't like to talk about the officiating, you know, and use that as an excuse, but the officiating was horrible yesterday. It was terribly one-sided, and it was horrible. And I, I don't think you're going to find many people, unless they're Giants fans, and even Giants fans may agree, uh, who would disagree with any of that. Uh, but moving right along, we had injuries. Uh we lost Tyler Larson. Uh, from what I hear, he's uh, he's got a brace on that leg. This is not good news. We had Martin who came in. Um, Martin was our center at the beginning of the year. <coughs> Excuse me, and he was he was part of the reason why our offensive line was was so horrible at the beginning of the season. He was trash. He really, I, I hate to say it, he was trash. And so he comes in and he miscalls. I don't know the correct grammar for this. He, he just, he screws up the protection right there. At, at Washington starts deep in their own territory. Uh, flat out screws up the protection. Tells... Charles Leno to slide inward on his protection. Charles does that, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, let's a defender have a free shot to Heineke. That was on the center. That was not on Charles Leno, folks. That was on the center calling the protections. That's what the center does. And Martin screwed up, and that's why you saw Martin the rest of the way, if you even noticed, you saw him turning around and looking at Heineke. Heineke was having to call, or at least telling Martin what the protections are. And folks, that that's gonna that's gonna hurt. Martin's gonna have to learn these protections, or we're gonna have to get another center, and or hope that Larson has a a, a tremendous turnaround in two weeks because. This is not good news for our offense. Martin's going to have to... He's going to have to cram and just know this stuff in two weeks because that was awful. That almost cost us the game there. Um, Montez Sweat went out uh, with a uh, concussion. I tell you, it, it's a good thing that we have a bye <laughs> because... If we did not have a bye, I, I, I would really, I, I would be worried about our chances the rest of the way because these guys have got to get healthy. Sam Cosme, speaking of healthy, he can't stay that. He can't stay healthy. Um, 
Cosby left the game hurt one more time. Schweitzer, Schweitzer came in to replace Sam Cosby. So now suddenly we're having shuffling among amongst that offensive line once again. So Taylor Heineke kind of got the uh, Carson Wentz treatment there yesterday, unfortunately. Hopefully, though, with Montez Sweat, that he's going to be ready to go in a couple of weeks. And hopefully by that time, maybe Chase Young will be back. I mean, you know, we've been saying that for the last three weeks. We've been saving them, folks, but it probably was smart to hold them out past the bye week, give them that extra week to to rest and to to be 100% because we need him at 100%. There's no sense in rushing Chase Young back. I mean, he's going to be your star for the next, hopefully, several years, right? So you don't want to rush Chase Young back. I know a lot of people are already saying, it doesn't matter, he's a bust anyway. I don't like fans like that. I really don't. You try tearing your ACL and your MCL and see how you do. I mean, it, it, that's just that's just all it is. That's it, just I, I don't get it. I, I just don't get that attitude. Um, so the next game is vital. It is vital, 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 vital. This I said that this game was a monster game, but. If this was a monster game, then the next game is is like a godlike game, right? I mean, this is like, I mean, this is our playoff lives here, folks. The Commanders have to win this next game against the Giants. Because, of course, Seattle didn't help us out yesterday at all. They won. They beat the Rams. So Seattle slides back into that seventh seed. And the Commanders, at least for right now, slide back onto the bubble and will be there until they play the Giants. And the Giants, they have the Eagles next week. So um, the Giants could be sliding even further by the time that they face us in two weeks. Uh, So you could be seeing the Giants uh, possibly having a seven five and one record by the time that they play us, who we also have a seven and five and one record. So that just makes it even more. Like I mean, <laughs> we cannot have another tie, folks. Okay, you cannot have another tie against the Giants. And like I said, a tie is not a win in my mind. A tie is a loss, in my mind. It really is. A tie is a loss. Um, and I know a lot of uh, fans are feeling that. A lot of players, Taylor Heineke said it felt like a loss to him. He had never played in a tie game before. And I really think the NFL needs, you know, I know they changed their overtime rules before. But let's just get rid of the stupid tie. Let's just okay. Let's uh, let's at least do this. All right. Let's at least if the teams are still tied at the end of the ten minutes and overtime, then at least just have the teams take turns line up at the the twenty yard line, the red zone. Have one team see if they can score. You know, and I'm not talking about kicking the field goal. You know, seeing if they can get into the end zone. If they can, have the other team try it. Do that until a team can't score. Okay? How about we just do that? Because I think, especially when you get into this time of the season, these games are so important that these ties just really, just really bite. (laughs) And, you know, I I just, I I just really think that ties in the NFL, 
I, I, I don't like them. Um, I mean, I, I just don't. I, I, I think, I think you need to play until that there's a winner. I mean, you do it in college, right? So, and, and shoot, I mean, I don't know about every high school league, but I know some high school leagues at least they don't do that. They they do sudden death overtime until there's a winner. And you can you can make the overtime to where it's not going to last for three hours. Okay, you can you can make it to where it's going to decide a winner, and it's going to do it relatively quick. You know, either do that or you know ha- make it a make it a penalty kick, right? Like they do in soccer, just. Have the have the field goal kickers line up, you know, starting at their I don't know their twenty yard line. Have them take turns kicking field goals. Keep moving it back until until a field goal kicker misses one. Let's just do that. I think that would be. Uh, I think maybe maybe we should just do that instead of. Uh, even playing overtime, I'd I'd probably be okay with that, you know. Uh, um, I don't know. I I just I just think that overtime, or I just think that ties, not overtime, but I just think ties in general. I just I don't like them. I, it just makes me, it just makes it feel like it's a, a it's a loss, and I, I realize it could have been a loss, so. I'm thankful it wasn't. It doesn't really hurt us that bad. Um, But it does kick us out of that sixth seed or that seventh seed. Uh, Had we won yesterday, we would have held on to that seventh seventh seed. But, you know, as I said in in one of my other videos, you're going to see these seeds change a million times before the season ends. So I totally expect, I really totally expect this team, if they can beat the Giants, I expect the Commanders to be in the playoffs. But it's going to come down to this Giants game. I really do think it's going to come down to the Giants game because I think they can handle the rest of the games. I I really think they can. So, all right. This video has gotten extremely long, but I think it was important that I had to say this. Um, So hopefully a lot of you guys didn't uh, check out too early because I think it was a very interesting video to talk about. Uh, Please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already. And when you do, make sure you hit that notification bell so you won't miss any other video releases from this channel. I need all the support I can get. I need some support, man. And until next time, held to the Washington Commanders, folks. Let's go Maniacs. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.